Sometimes, putting a hunting trip together is a little like gambling. You need to put up your money, or in this case, your boot leather, without knowing whether you'll win or lose. If we can walk out of here with a grouse today. Oh, today? Yeah. I'm in southwest Montana with Ronnie Bain. He's one of my favorite friends, always great for laughs. I'm starting to think these are mythical birds. He's also the best wing shooter I know, but one thing he ain't is a mountain man, and I'm gonna make him pay for that by walking him half to death in search of a strange and extremely tasty bird, the dusky grouse. Getting close. I shouldn't ask it, should I? Okay, okay. Uh, uh, I wouldn't worry about it. <laughs> I'm Steven Ronella. To me, hunting isn't only about the pursuit of an animal. It's about who we are and what we're made of. I live to hunt and hunt to live. I am a meat eater. Anyone who wanders around in the Rockies might stumble into a dusky grouse, commonly known as the blue grouse. But it takes a special combination of skill and luck to find more than a few in any one excursion. My brother Matt and I hunted these mountains in the greater Yellowstone region together for almost a decade in search of elk with our bows. Often, we come off these hellacious elk trips having seen a few dusky grouse, but that's after walking 25 miles or so over the course of several days. Not a great bird to mile ratio. Still, I've always fantasized about coming here for a dedicated dusky grouse trip. The problem is that the spots that reliably hold birds tend to be really high and really far away. Joining me is my buddy, Ronnie Bain. He's a great bird hunter and an even better friend, and he has made the long drive across the country with his dogs to join me on what might be described as a harebrained hunt. Now, Ron, the first thing you need to do on this trip is acknowledge that we've been on some good hunting trips. Oh, yeah, we've been to some Where doozies. We've gone to, like, good places, like Prince of Wales for bears. Canada for grouse. Like, the places where you would actually go if you wanted to get something. And I, I agree with that statement. And I mention this because this is not what one would call a good grouse hunt spot. <laughs> and, it mean, it mean, and it means a lot to me that you come out here with your dogs to help me fulfill something that's been bugging me for 15 years. I was excited about this, and then I got here, and I look up at these hills, and just I, I just got like a sinking feeling in my gut. This could be Ranella's folly, couldn't this it? This could be Ranella's folly. These are Ronnie's dogs, Artie and Bravo. Good morning. They're Italian Broncos, and Ronnie breeds and occasionally sells them. It's an ancient hunting dog from the Italian peninsula. In modern times, the breed's claim to fame is that Faith Hill owns one, and I know a handful of guys who would find nothing wrong with being led on a leash by her. You know, as much as I feel bad about, uh, to you, like if this winds up being a disaster, yeah. I especially feel bad for the dogs, man. You got a good Cause they're point, like, man. I'm out here to find birds, man. Right. This is bozo. This is, this is bull yeah. All right, buddy. Now it's time to put my theory to the test. Will we get into birds or will we get skunk? But we won't know until we get there, and there is a far hike away. All my fears aside, I couldn't be hunting with a better guy. Ronnie's loved by everyone he knows. He's funny, he's self-deprecating, he's generous. In fact, the guy kept me working for his contracting company all through my college years, for which I owe him big time. So I like to pay him back the best way I know how, with super long, blister-inducing walks. Hey, Steve, you might have to put it in third gear. This may be one of my worst ideas ever. This is a little more than this old shit the five-year-old guy wants to do right now, Steve. This is what you're gonna be doing all day. You didn't have to tell me that. Whoa! Whew. Oh, that was graceful. Hey, Ronnie, we took a wrong turn. You got us all messed up. You didn't. Not too bad, a little bit. That's way back the other way, isn't it? Well, let me look. It's always an adventure with you. So that adds a mile. So remember I told you a mile? It just add a mile. You're just trying to... 
You're just trying to kill me. I'm trying to go up the branch that doesn't have a trail. <laughs> All righty, well, nothing like practice. Where to, Lewis? This looks familiar, Steve. Yeah, you almost feel like we've been through like, here before. Like, there's been some other people through here because I can see the boot. Dog tracks. Dog tracks. I bet you we're the only two people out here doing this today. Only two. In the state of Montana. No. Yeah. No. God, I'm so waiting for wing beats. It's like, yeah. got to be one soon. Well, keep in mind, we're not where we're going yet. <laughs> Quit saying that. For this spot, I'm headed to an area that my brother Matt tipped me off about. About a week ago, he bumped a covey of duskies on top of a peak crowned in a parkland of open grasslands, pine, and fir. The problem is, I've never been up in that country before. All I have to go on is a rough description of the land that my brother offered over the telephone, which came with the warning that it's a long ways off and getting there might kill Ronnie. 82? What's the peak on this thing? 85. Oh, hell. Should have never gave those kids a job in high school. If this is what I think it is, it's just like a network of these hilltop parklands. If it is, we'll just start serpentine through them. We finally make it to the top of the ridge where the parklands open up. It's awful pretty up here, I gotta say that much. Like, if we're gonna find a bird, this is probably, like, this would be where we'd find it. Yeah. When you're hunting this stuff, they're gonna be on the edges. What you always wanna do is go through and check these little islands of timber. Yeah. Let the dogs work the islands of timber. If you can, like, walk right through the islands of timber and work the edges. The birds are always on the edges of these things. Right. At a point, I'm half afraid that Ronnie's gonna turn to me and say, that's it, man, I am never hunting with you again. But then... I've led my buddy Ronnie on a wild goose chase into the mountains of southwest Montana, or rather, a wild grouse chase. We're combing the hills for dusky or blue grouse, a bird you always seem to find when you're not looking for them, but that can become depressingly scarce when you're actually in the market. That wasn't, wait a minute, that is. I panicked when they got up. I thought they were baby turkeys. <laughs> Brav. Out, out. They're big birds, huh? It's a big bird. We should be able to maybe get lucky and find them again. There was many in that group. There was four or five, wasn't there? I saw another I, one come out of there. I'm thinking, that's not, can't be grouse. And they got that more turkey sound. But you know how young turkey sound going up off the ground? Turkeys. I'm waiting for that rough grouse. Yeah, they got those nice hairy legs. Oh my god, that thing was loud. No, they're beautiful big birds, man. It is. Let's just keep going in that line, that direction, Ron. Yeah and just kind of stare up into the trees. Getting to a place like this is magical, and it helps explain my affinity for dusky grouse. When you go pheasant hunting, more often than not, you can look up and see a house or a barn. When hunting these birds, you can usually look up and see nothing but nothing. The difficulty in reaching them more than makes up for their reputation as being a slow flying, if not a little dim-witted bird. Boy, hey girl. Hey, girl. Come here, baby. Oh, good girl. Good girl. Ah! Oh, damn it. You know what they say, one shot got him. Two shot maybe, three shot missed him. I couldn't shoot you. Yeah, Why you son of a I, uh. I couldn't do it, I'd have blown his eardrums out. Two of them. See one? Yo! Was that a double? Yes, sir! <laughs> <laughs> nice! I told you Ryan could shoot. <laughs> out, out. Go get another. Dead bird. He, he is a good shot, man. <laughs> I'm so excited I myself. Hey, Steve. 
Thanks for taking me, Grouse, son. <laughs> <laughs> Weather can change fast up here. It starts to pour. We're gonna call it for the day and head back down. But as quick as the rain came, it leaves. Whoa, 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 whoa. We come across a small spring and decide to stop in order to gut out and wash the cavities of our birds. Hey, come on. Get. I already go lay down. Until the year 2006 or so, dusky grouse were known as blue grouse, part of one big population that stretched from the Rockies to the Pacific coast. But then, ornithologists realized that the birds we've been calling blue grouse were actually comprised of two distinct species, duskies in the Rockies, sooties in the Pacific coast ranges. You let these dogs eat the guts? No. God, they got a stinky system, don't they? Well, you let it sit in there for a couple hours. No, Steve, I've let pheasants sit in there for days. Never smelled that. You think guts should start smelling better as they rot? No, I think some animals' guts smell worse than others. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of that? I think, they, I think you're probably not into something. <laughs> some things just stink more. I'm one of them. Want them back in the bottom? <clears throat> They're an odd bird. It was a big full day of hiking, over eight miles and a couple thousand vertical feet for about half our limit of birds. Not a great grouse to mile ratio. But we're in agreement it was worth it. I'm turning Ronnie into a dusky grouse believer. Dawn till dusk. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I was up there, seriously. I can't believe it. That was a long... That was a long walk, man. That was a real long walk. Oh, I can't even get the tailgate open. Oh. Artie, you got any energy left? Huh? Oh, you ain't got any energy left, do you? Come on, baby. That's a girl. I'm gonna kill him. But you know what? It's only two miles per grouse. Well, if you think of it that way... That's some tired pup there. That's a, that was a big workout for him. That's a huge workout for him. Oh, let's go get a beer. Four grouse is a good enough day that Ronnie agrees to hit it again tomorrow. In the meantime, we head back for some beer, some food, and some sleep. grouse adventure. And while some of us are sore from yesterday's little hike, our success at the top of the mountain is motivation enough for another hilltop expedition. I'm not one to pass up a ground sluice now and then, but it's against Ronnie's philosophy. He's a wing shooter, pure and simple. Oh, you got it, Steve. Yeah. Good job. I, when I shot at, I missed. Hey, Artie. Here she comes. Say out. Out. You got to grab it and say out. 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 There goes oh, another one. There goes another one. So that's what? Our first first rough grouse on a trip. Yeah. Three of them all in one spot. A nice family group. Ronnie and I continue our hike up to dusky grouse habitat in the hopes that we'll get into some more birds. Are we, uh, should I not ask if we're getting close? I shouldn't ask it, should I? Okay, okay. okay. I, I, I wouldn't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Ew, not me, not in the least. 
One foot in front of the other. It's good exercise, though. Yeah, it's, it's great exercise. I think everybody should do this on a vacation. Son of a Those dogs smell those birds, man. You them off the ground right in there. Mm -hmm. Go around that way. Mm. Today we hiked even farther and higher than yesterday. Unfortunately, we don't get into much action, and by midday, the dogs are exhausted. We decide to head back down. But this morning's rough grouse, combined with yesterday's dusky grouse, will make for a fine meal. Honestly, though, for this, like, so we had, what well, we saw, two rough grouse. Yeah. Yep. And six, six. Six blue. Blue, and that is more than I was expecting. Like, you remember the first morning we went out, I was predicting disaster. I was picturing something more like this, but with less birds. The only thing about this hunt is I just wish there was an easy way to get to the hunting ground. I mean, but I think that if it was, it wouldn't be any good. Well, I mean, you know, we hunted in Michigan a lot. You can get to every piece of hunting ground in Michigan easy. Yeah, but I don't pick them. I'm not like wishing, I'm not like right now wishing I was hunting out of my truck. No, 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 I'm just like, saying. I like it because I like to hunt these places because I like to come to these areas. Right. And if you could just drive up here, these areas wouldn't be, they'd be ruined. If someone had came to me and said, Steve, I want to get into the craziest, wing shootingest, bloodbathest, wild west, bird busting shootout, yeah. I wouldn't be like, oh, I got a great idea. Let's hike up to, you know, 9,500 feet and look for blue grouse. It just wouldn't be what I would suggest. But if someone said I was looking for a little bit of adventure and to do something not many people do, and maybe get a shot or two cracked off, I would say. Or a like double. A, yeah, I would say let's hike up, hike up high and go look for blue grouse. Now, Ronnie and I obviously have differing opinions on this particular grouse hunting experience, but one thing we can totally agree on is this. These birds sure do make for great eating. Looking pile of birds. You know what? Looks like they've been through the war. <laughs> Show me the stand on the wing trick. You want to try that with one of these? Well, just stand up because I'm too low to do it. Stand on both wings. Okay. And then take the two back le the two legs. Yep. And pull up slow and straight, very slow and steady. There it is. You got the hind end, and there's the front end. I want to kind of get your back legs ready, too. I love the color of this. I didn't know blue grouse was going to be a light pink color. That is almost identical to the size of a rooster pheasant in South Dakota, you know, we, you know that I shoot a lot of. I've always admired the way you Rinellas can all sit like an aborigine on your heels. Let me see if I can try to do that. I can't do it. How do you like to do it? Yes, in the pants. It's like sifting for gold, Steve. Look. Yeah, I mean, get all the pink gold is what pink that's gold. called, man. Dusky gold. Dusky gold. That sounds even better. I'm getting hungry. I don't know about you. Now that we have the birds cleaned, it's time to start cooking. Ronnie will be making our appetizer: jalapeno, grouse, and cream cheese poppers. Well, that's that's downright cute. While he's working on those, I'll be making the main course. Grouse over fettuccine. I'm going to brown these pieces. And once everything's browned up, I'm just going to braise them. And while they simmer, I'm going to get the pasta ready. Then we'll just have like a pasta with a cream sauce with grouse on top of it. Be like chicken primavera, I think, but different. Ooh, I got that jalapeno on my lips. Is it hot? Oh, yeah. Is it some potent peel? It's, it's some potent. Sometimes they're not, but wow. See that, I put the hot end of the cigar in my mouth. <laughs> this is the Ron Bain special popper. Uh, is it, are, you, is it, are you like mm, burning mm, the inside of your mouth mm, right now? No. Mm, okay. Mm. But you gotta get all three flavors together. Mm -hmm. That is good, man. Mm -hmm. 
And the grouse is the right texture for it. Mm -hmm. There's cow moose stain there. Where? No kidding. Look at that. Jesus. The pasta's ready to go. Unfortunately, we're a little light on plates. One of us is going to have to eat out of the dog bowl. Yeah, that's going to clean up nice. Mm -mm. Steve, that's good. Is it? Yeah. Ronnie, it was yep. big of you. Come all, all the way out of here for something that might very well have been a disaster. You know? Mm hmm. I owe you one. You know what I'm going to do? What's that? I'm so indebted to you, I'm going to take you on a um, high country blue grouse hunt next year. Just to pay, just to thank you for coming. So what was this, low country? <laughs> for me, it's more about the habitat in the country. Hunting these birds is a fine reason to be in a great spot, especially when you have a faithful friend like Ronnie along with you. That's a nice after-dinner That's a nice after-dinner drink. It's like that. It's like Easy Rider, man. He's like... <laughs> <laughs>